All right. Uh, go, Gogs. Welcome to the Movie the Podcast. That's right. Movie the Podcast, home of the birthday swap What does that mean? <laughs> Stay tuned to find out. Is yeah. it sexual? Stay tuned to find out. Me we were talking. We were talking. Birthdays. We had. Uh, I had our housewarming party over the weekend. And nice. We were talking Life, God, why was I invited? Gog should have held out. Well, I didn't think you'd make it from Inverness. <laughs> um, but we we're talking. That Gog should have held out for more picks from you. No, no, he, he can't do that because here's the thing, right? It's like one of those, um, oh, uh, Ke- well, it didn't work for Kevin Durant, but it's like, we're going to have to watch Clerks 3, right? So, like, there's, you can't, like, leverage anything because we have to watch right. it. So get what you can. You it's know. like right, right, right. Dunkirk. There's no escaping this, son. Right. It's Machado to the Dodgers. It's like we fucked around with this for too long, and now we got to get rid of it, and this is what we get. Yeah. We, yeah. Well, so we watched. Uh, we watched my birthday pick, which was Three Kings, uh, and we're gonna hot swap in November, and then we get to watch Clerks the Three. Oh boy! Can't unless wait. the show, I, like, unless we, unless we end the show. Hopefully, the world ends. <laughs> Maybe uh, I'll so trade up, way. maybe I'll trade up my birthday pick, and we'll just keep pushing it. So oh, eventually, so eventually, people forget about it. Oh, well, we're we not still have forget. all those rules we never use, like where we can break format. So literally, whatever my next pick that that movie's available, we're watching it. So just like, <laughs> yeah, the only reason we want. didn't watch it this time is because you had to rent it. Like this is the funniest thing ever to me is that it's available digitally. And understand if you're not a filthy pirate like me. Every movie is available once it, especially if it's new. If it's new and it goes digital, it's available the same day and generally a couple of days beforehand. Like, I don't know how these people get them, but if something comes out on like Amazon, it's usually out two or three days before it's officially released on Amazon. No one gives a fuck about Clerks 3. It's not available anywhere. It is available digitally. You have to purchase it for $15. And uh, you rent it. You don't even purchase it. Why is your connection all bad, guys? You're you never a problem with your mic. Your mic's all germily. I was all gonna get a st- stupid pop filter. The pop yeah. filter so got is your pop filter fucking up? Oh, you got maybe. some kind of limiter on it or something? <laughs> I got a pop limiter. limiter. Clerks three, I, a movie it's that's it's apparently a... so bad that the positive reviews on Rotten Tomatoes are like two point oh, five out Sean, of five. Thank you. Thank you for pointing that out. I. So I saw some very deceptive marketing for the movie where they put, uh, help me out, guys, the little popcorn icon. Was that the icon? That's the the audience reaction icon. Is that right? Yeah. Like that's. The, do I still sound? Do I sound better or worse? You sound fine now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's the but audience the, on, on. Yeah. So they put it put like eighty eight percent Rotten Tomato, but they had the little popcorn icon, and then one of y'all, I, I shared that. One of y'all was like, "Oh no, that's the." The audience score. That's not the critical. The critical score is like in the in the toilet, like you would expect. Yeah. And like audience score is fucking stupid. Like I'm sorry, but like audience score is always higher than critical. Like every time. And I I saw on TikTok actually the the, the night uh Saturday night when I came home I saw some fucking goof. Like he was like he literally he he uh his video was. Like he was tearing up about how much he loved Clerks Three. I was like, okay, people are just oh, insane. Jesus Christ. Like tearing was he, up. Are, are you sure he wasn't joking about how Kevin no. Smith tears up about everything? No, I, if he was, this was a very this this guy was next level. No, I'm pretty sure this guy was sincere with how he how much he loved this film because uh, it was also the caption was was very like glowing about Kevin Smith. It's like I. Yeesh. I am. Uh, I I think uh, before we watch it, whenever we do watch Clerks Three, we need to figure out if it's like we need to put some kind of prop bet if it's going to be better or worse than Jay and Silent Bob reboot. Because I think oh, that would be better. Bottom of the, the better. I, would I think, think it, it might would have be to be better. Than I think the it reboot. might be worse. We'll mark me down for better. We'll figure it out. When we yeah, I'm going it. better. Because that was. That was There's no like, possible fucking way. It's worse than that. That was movie. like disturbing how bad it was. <laughs> like it was. Yeah, and disturbing in how much Kevin Smith wants to fuck his daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. It's bad. Uh, all right. Uh, what it's did you, so, oh, oh, what did we watch this week, Scott? Did you say? You didn't say. Three kings. Yeah, we did. We watched We watched Three Kings. David O. Russell's Three Kings. Uh, David O. Russell's best movie. Ooh, I would wow. not even disagree. I the would, fighter's uh, real good, though. I, I like the fighter, fighter quite really a bit. I, I like, like the fighter, and I like Silver Linings Playbook. I, I like Silver Linings Playbook, that. too. I really liked I Heart Huckabees, but I think I'm alone on that one. <laughs> it's a you movie about it. existentialism. I mean, it's amazing. Uh, what's that? I Heart Huckabees? Yeah. So I, I love, yeah, that, I love movie. that movie. It, and is also, the guy the, that doesn't get talked about very much, but he's got a very interesting career. Yeah, he's only directed he's, like he's only directed like ten movies. Yeah, it's pretty, he's pretty up and down though. Like I don't know, and also like apparently he's like notoriously hard to work with. Like I don't know if y'all heard that like. There's like that they used to play it on Stern show all the time. And I think it's from I Heart Huckabees where he's like screaming at Lily Tomlin. Yeah. <laughs> it's, re- it's really bad. Also, he well, was apparently uh, on this apparently on this movie, him and Clooney had like major issues. Oh uh, yeah, that's what I like hear all like through, all the time. All yeah. through. Um and like everything also, I've heard everything I've heard about Clooney is that he's like super easy to work with. Yeah, yeah, I've heard he's pretty he's pretty agreeable. Like I, the only thing that I've ever heard about Clooney was on uh Confessions of a Dangerous Mind. I guess like him and Coffin didn't get, didn't get along because he like butchered his script, but whatever. Uh the thing one of the funniest David O. Russell facts that I always like to remember is he was the initial director for the Uncharted movie. That's how long that movie Wild. was in production. Yeah, he was, sp- and it was supposed to be Marky Mark as Nathan Drake. Oh, I do, I do remember there. that. Instead, yeah, he can't be like, like his older uncle or something. He was, uh, he was uh, Sully. Uh, if you, he was like the older sidekick to. Uh, to I Nathan never played Nathan any of those Drake. movies. Oh, you should or play games. them. They're great. I They're really them. good. They were, I, I have the Uncharted the PS4. Collection. That's the one that I have, but I just okay. never played the games. You should check it out. I think you'd really it was like cheap, it. It was cheaper to buy. It was cheaper on Amazon to buy the PS4 with the Uncharted bundle mm-hmm. than just a PS4 with nothing. Thanks so I got that one and then immediately bought Call of Duty and just played Call of Duty for... Based. Based. Um, based. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's uh, get into what we watched this week. Uh, Gogs. I watch parts of two things. I didn't watch... I didn't watch anything to completion. Uh, I watched the first 30 minutes of that boxer tumor movie that we were going to watch until the audible was called. Uh, I guess I'll go back to that at some point. And then uh, I watched a good chunk of the uh, uh, Emily Blunt, uh, Mary Poppins. Re- it's not a reboot. It's actually a sequel. Mary Poppins Returns. Mm-hmm. I was watching that with my kids. Oh, it's it's fine. Who plays the Dick what I saw? character? Is he in it? Dick Van Dyke is in the movie as like what? the old banker. He's still alive. Yeah, yeah. Lin Man. What's alive? wild about that movie is, oh, he, yeah, he's ninety two. He was ninety six. He's ninety six now. I think he was ninety two when that movie came out in twenty eighteen. Holy uh, fuck! He. Uh, what's interesting is that the chimney sweep character is played by Lin Manuel Miranda, and oh. so it's Lin Manuel Miranda trying to do his best Cockney accent, and that's a bit much. I mean, um, it wasn't Dick Van Dyke doing his best cocky accent yeah. a bit much. That's the exact same retort my wife gave me, and I told her to shut up. So, uh, what are you, you going to tell me? I'm going to tell you to tell my wife to shut up. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's 100 percent true. Uh, Emily Blunt's great in it; she's nailing the whole uh, Judy uh, Julie Andrews vibe. But she's the movie's really just good. kind of she's, there. She's a really good actress. Yeah, she really great. is. She is really. She is a really good actress. I think I've slept on Emily Blunt for way too long. She's quite a. I don't yeah. think I've seen her in anything that I've like didn't like. I liked her in this. Yeah. I liked her in the. I liked her in the the quiet move, the quiet place. I liked her in Live Die Repeat or whatever that's called nowadays. Yeah, Live Die. Repeat. Um, what was that? What is the title? The Edge tomorrow. of Tomorrow. Edge of Tomorrow. Oh. And the book yeah, is the of... book is all you need is kill. That's it. A- Edge of Tomorrow is the, the worst fucking title. It's so bad. It, I mean, it's so clunky. It's just like it is kind of clunky. But uh, all and you I need is kill a, is amazing. What's the What's the movie where she and um what's his name the guy who's winning the Muppets are like on and off um to 
It's like a romantic oh, comedy. Like five year engagement or something like yeah, that. Yeah, she's good in that too. So uh, you know, shout out Emily Blunt, big up Blunt. Um she should be a rapper. She should be. Yeah, Emily Blunt's with a Z. Mm-hmm. Or she um, should just sell weed. Emily's <laughs> yes. Or just rappers, honestly. Or I mean, you know, papers. Uh oh, rappers. You know, like but, White Owls. You know what I'm talking uh, about. Um, but that's all I kind of watched. Uh Sean. Uh, I just watched Cobra Kai season, whatever the current one was. Is it awesome? It's good, man. Like it's if you like the other ones, you like this one. It's progressively more stupid and uh, ridiculous, but you know, in for a penny, in for a pound. I like it. Uh, it's nothing new. Uh, they keep bringing back people from the other movies for like the most contrived reasons, and it's it's fun, man. It's real dumb. It doesn't take itself so seriously. Eventually, all. eventually, they're gonna have the whole original cast just like show up all at once. I don't know if there's anybody left. Like to br- they're gonna parade out the corpse of Pat Morita. Hell yeah! Well, it's not it's not well, canon, right? But could Jackie Chan show up? I know that's a isn't that a different timeline than the regular Karate Kid? Yeah, that's yeah, a different. That's a different multiverse branch. Yeah, they well, should, should bring, bring in, in Jackie one, Chan though. though. That would be fun. Just bring him in. Yeah. Call, just say, I mean, Pat Morita's dead, so just say, hey, what's up, Mister Miyagi? What's going on? <laughs> There's a, a great joke where uh, Chosen's talking to John, and he's like, Daniel saw and I fought to the death, and Johnny goes, "So what are you a fucking ghost?" <laughs> but beyond that i didn't do much besides watch football so well um the only movie i watched i just watched one movie one film one it was thing. called uh uh what was it called it's a melissa mccarthy movie uh tammy she's like a, a down on her down on her luck loser who's her and her grandmother decide to take a road trip cross country and they get into all kinds of hijinks and it's fine. Like I like, I like Melissa McCarthy. So most of her stuff I I find at least semi enjoyable. Um, This is probably on the lower tier of the stuff that she's done. It's no like, it's no like bridesmaids or spy. Like some of those movies I think are legitimately like fantastic. Spy was but really it's, funny. It's like an hour. I think it's under an hour and a half. So like, perfect. Sign me up. Yeah, yeah. The ninety, uh, the, the ninety minute point bump. <laughs> yeah, every time. Um, that's all I watched. I just, I, I'm up to date on She Hulk. That's good. Uh, we watched the first episode of the. Uh, I can always forget the name. Of it. We own the night, or we are the city. We own the city. Oh yeah, that's whatever good. it's called. Uh, like John yeah, that... man is. How do you like, like his? Is that, uh, is that his, from the guy his, who made The Wire? Yes. Yeah. How do you like his uh, Baltimore? His shitty like Dundalk accent. I thought it was perfect. It is like, perfect. That guy's yeah. just like a force, man. Whenever he is on screen, he's just like he just like towers above everybody else as yeah. far as like acting ability. Like it's crazy. He's not like a huge breakout star. Yeah, he's amazing. Even with all the stuff, like even like since The Walking Dead, that when that come out, like two thousand six or seven. Yeah, and like he's done a ton of stuff since then, but I don't think anything where he's like a household name. Like, no, he like consistently but, works, but yeah, he's not like a. But he's, he's not like a. Yeah. Oh, so good. Um, but yeah, that's all I watched. The first episode of that's really good. I'm excited to watch more. It's only like five episodes, I think. So, yeah, Yo, you'll you'll blast through it. it nice, it, like, nice it's limited over. series. I can be through quickly and not have to watch anymore. Yeah, you'll you'll feel like it's over, like it's over very quickly. Like I I got through it. I'm like, damn, that's it. Is that I mean, it was great. Yeah. Um. All right. Who's left? Who's left? You? Me. I'm me. I watched one thing and one TV thing. One thing. Uh, we'll go TV thing first. I watched all of Netflix. Did I talk about this already? Maybe I did. I can't remember. Uh, I watched all of Netflix's uh, new Cyberpunk 2077 show, Edge Runners. Um, it's great. Like, it's really good. Um, the best thing about it is it's 10 episodes, and it each episode is 22 minutes long. Hey, so oh, you yeah. will blast through this. The animation is fantastic. Um, I am, like, I have been an unabashed apologist of the Cyberpunk 2077 video game since day one. I love it. It's possibly my favorite game of all time. I am currently replaying it for the fifth time. I never replay video games. I can't get enough of this game. 
And the show is great because they legit use like locations from the game. Um, it's kind of cool. There's shit now that they did an update of the game, and there's shit that directly ties into the show, which is cool. And I don't know, but I really like the show. I thought the animation was really neat. I'm not familiar with the studio. You know, anime is always broken up by the studios that put these shows out or movies. And the studio is called Studio Trigger. I'm not very familiar with them, but I mean, this was this is good enough for me to like check out their other stuff. Um, I love the. It's got like a really great soundtrack. It actually uses a lot of songs from the game. Like uh, Cyberpunk is like uh, GTA, where they use they get like licensed songs. Um, but I I loved it, and I loved how like quick it was. Like my only complaint is that I felt like the episodes, like the story they tell is good, but like there's because of, they have such a crunch, there are some like emotional beats that could have like had some time to breathe. But like you know, they got twenty two minutes an episode, so they're just like, like we gotta move, gotta move, gotta move, gotta move, gotta move. But it, it's really good, and I think like even like non anime fans would like this. Like it's not, it's not like swimming in like anime tropes either. You, like, but are like, do you have to be like a huge fan of the the game to appreciate, or can anyone kind of dig into it? No, if you, like, I don't think so. I mean, or neo noir. Like, I think like, I mean. I think. If I mean, I'm gonna like it because I also you, am I don't think, apologetic I mean, I think, about my love of cyberpunk. I mean, I think like if you never played the game and you watch the show, I think you'd be interested in playing the game. But I don't think you would need to like. I mean, they use some like terminology like from the game and like they use the language that the game uses. But like all that stuff is easy like, to pick up. Or, like kai, kaiju. No, <laughs> no, like it, it, uh, cyberpunk. They use like kind of like a lot of like science fiction stuff like they have kind of like their own little like slang words like nova and choom and stuff like that but you pick that up from context like i don't know i loved it i i i hope they do a season two i liked it so much i they probably won't because uh these these like netflix anime series are notorious for being like one and done because apparently animation is very expensive <laughs> but uh it's really good i i loved it i thought it was great uh so highly recommend Cyberpunk 2077 Edge Runners. Uh, Not to be mistaken re- for the Blade Runner Netflix no, the, show. That that's not on. That's a uh, Adult Swim, and that's oh, called my bad. Black Lotus, and it's not very good. Sadly, um, I didn't like the animation in that. I thought it was kind of boring. Um, anyway, the the movie movie I watched was a movie that got really really hyped, and maybe I'm a victim of the hype train, but I watched barbarian uh which is like the new like like the new hyped horror movie right now um i don't want to spoil it because uh i don't know it's it's a it's a movie that's kind of predicated upon its big twist but i i want to pose you guys a question because i i seriously can't figure this out for myself like i don't i don't really have a good answer so this film if you watch the trailer the trailer and this movie, both in content, well, I guess it's the same thing. I was going to say the story that they promise you in the trailer and the tone of the film in the trailer is totally different than the the tr- the, the movie that you get. Now, my question is, is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? Or you can't blanket, you can't make a blanket statement like that because well, it depends on what you wanted to see. Like, right. I yeah, guess... like if you wanted to see a movie about prisons and kickboxing, and you get a bunch of <laughs> oh, lady <my> boy <laughs> banging, then I, that's again, a problem. That movie, that, that, movie, that is not that's not even close. That movie gives you exactly what it says it was going to give you. In fact, it gives yeah. you more of it. Like I, I don't, under, I really don't understand. I mean, the movie it. presented itself as a prestige drama in the trailers with some kickboxing. Yeah, but the poster showed a guy getting ready to punch people. So you're I guess, a still image. I guess my my thing is is that like I I always complain, and I've done it on the show many times. I complain the trailers nowadays tell you too much. I feel like half of the movies you see, you see the trailer, and it's like, well, there's no need to watch the movie. I know exactly what's going to happen. Now this movie. Now, the trailer is ambiguous. Like, it doesn't tell you anything. Now, I normally would like that, but then I guess when you get, I get, I guess my real complaint is when you get to the meat and potatoes of this movie, 
it's disappointing because I feel like it doesn't deliver on a promise that the trailer gave you. You know what mm. I mean? Like it's unpredictable. Well, what's the trailer? Can I? I mean, like I'm not gonna watch. Well, I'll mean... tell you. I can tell you what it is. I, I'm not gonna spoil it because a lot of people haven't seen it yet. And a lot. Of, the other thing is, a lot of people really like this movie. So it's I very, might just be very highly I, rated. I might just be wrong. I could be totally wrong. I'm per, I'm perfectly okay with that. Uh, so the movie basically is uh, this girl shows up at an Airbnb, and someone's already there, and it's kind of suspicious right like it's kind of weird this is like weird it's a double booked and then is this guy who he who is this guy like why is he there it's kind of weird there's like kind of sus and then they find this shit in the basement and that's the trailer like they there's something weird going on in this house you don't know what it is trailer's over right and without again i will not spoil anything but without getting too much into it the movie is very campy once the reveal is is made and it's like kind of almost like a black comedy at times like i i don't know it didn't work for me and i i again i i don't want to say it but like the ultimate reveal of the killer to me is like incredibly disappointing and like also like just dumb like incredibly like it's the same, it's the same problem with x right like i fucking hated x and everybody loved that movie too because the killer in that is just this 90-year-old woman who is, like, throwing fucking pitchforks and, like, running around a farm and doing all this, like, ninja shit. It's like, well, she's 90 years old. Like, that doesn't make any sense. This movie has a similar problem. And I don't know. I, uh, I'm i kind of shocked at how many people just, like, flat out love it. Like, yeah, and, and they keep saying the same thing. It's like, well, I didn't know what was coming, and it's crazy. It's like, yeah. And I, I agree. But, like, I don't think that makes it good. Just because it Can was I... unpredictable, does that make it good? I don't think yeah, so. Yeah, are M. Night Shyamalan movies good? For right, the most exa- part, yeah. no. Can, that's can a, I ask that's you a question? great parallel, Alec. I, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah absolutely. What, what, what did, would it be, would you spoil it if you explain what you thought the movie was going to be? No, I think I, I already, well, I thought it was going to be more of, like, a, slow burn like do you mean who i thought the killer would be or like what the movie what the movie like what it didn't deliver on that you were anticipating i think if you watch the trailer it's easier than me explaining it but i think it was good i thought it was going to be more of like a slow burn psychological Mm. type horror movie like kind of you know like i hate the i really hate the expression but like an elevated horror movie if you will Mm -hmm. um and it's not that at all. And I'm not saying every movie has to be, but if you watch the trailer, that's what you expect it to be. And I think like, ultimately if what the subversion was, was interesting, I would have less problems with it. But to me, it's Mm -hmm. just really dumb. And the other thing is, is that like they hid the fucking Justin Long is in this movie. And it's like, Ooh, I don't what? No, I don't want that. (laughs) Also like his character makes like absolutely no sense to me. Um, this isn't really a spoiler because he's introduced and he's this actor that's been me too'd and like his character. Like, I don't know. I don't really understand what the director who's also the writer, who's also one of the guys on the whitest kids, you know, he's, I forget his name, but he's one of, one of those guys, um, Mm. which I love. That's a great show. Um, But like Justin Long is an actor that's legit getting me too'd. He makes it ex- ex- explicit that he deserves to get Me too because he did what he's been accused of. And, like, he doesn't... Have, his character arc is that he's a piece of shit and he's a piece of shit the entire time. Like, I don't understand that. Like, it's funny. And this will be the last thing I say about it because I'm going kind of long. I apologize. I watched a movie a few months ago that I talked about on the show. <laughs> Oddly enough, called barbarians plural and it was a home invasion movie and i hated the movie so much because the people that were the victims in that movie were the most unlikable people i've ever seen on film and like not like unlikable in the fact that like i didn't like them as actors or their acting didn't work like they were written as very unlikable characters so why do i why do i want to invest myself in characters that I want to see die. Like, that's not the point of the movie. You know what I mean? Like, that's not what they're going for. Like, I don't understand. And, like, Justin Long's character, it's like, yeah, I hope he dies. 
but like he's the sympathetic one in the movie. It's like what? I I don't know. It's a very confusing movie. I'm very I am I I'm interested to see cuz this happens a lot, right? Like the movie comes out and it's just in theaters. It's not like widely like it's widely released, but like it's not wildly like, released. Well, when I mean something's like wildly released, I mean like it gets to Netflix and like all like everybody starts watching it and then it seems like there's more of a consensus to come around and i wonder what the wider thoughts in this movie are going to be but i don't know i i did not care for barbarian um i will give it a little bit of credit i thought the acting was good um the 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 girl georgina something or other i thought she was really good uh bill scarsgar is really good uh that guy should be in more stuff um and I thought that the camera work, like I, the tension in like the first hour is like really well done. And the, the music is good. Like, and then it just kind of falls off the rails. Like when they, te- when you actually realize like, oh, this is like a fucking monster movie, like ass, like, I don't know. Maybe I'm, I hate to say it, but like, maybe I've just outgrown a lot of horror movies. Like this, this shit just doesn't work for me anymore. Like. I still love the classics, but like, I don't know. When you try to make like the hills have eyes, but you tr- you try to make it and try to make it like smart, it just doesn't work. Like, I don't. What's the last like horror movie, new horror movie you enjoyed? Did you like Men? Did you see Men? I fucking love it. Men. Is like my favorite movie this year. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, I loved it, and I love Men. Full stop. Period. Mm. But, uh, I, I I mean I don't know I'm trying to think like I really like that movie The Night House that I I talked about a couple of weeks ago that was a new horror movie like I still like horror movies it's just like this this feels like kind of like trying to be it's trying to have its cake and eat it too right it's trying to be a modern more serious more grounded horror movie and also be a grindhouse monster movie and I don't think it works like I don't think you can do both. Like I, I just don't. And if you can, this isn't how you do it. I, I really like Nope. That that was a horror movie that came out recently. I really enjoyed that. I mean, I do like horror movies. It's just I don't, I don't know. Uh, this this one wasn't for me, dog. So yeah, I don't know. I'd be I'd be interested to to, to think. I'd be interested to hear what what any of you all thought of the movie because I'd like to hear some other opinions from people that aren't just on TikTok. So I might anyway. watch it without watching the trailer just to see what I think. That would be an interesting experiment. So I'm, I'm not gonna lie. You said it's super hyped. I had not heard of this movie. Uh, well, you're not on like the the. You're not in like the fucking. Well, worst. First of all, you're not like chronically online like I am. And secondly, you're not in like the fucking movie sphere. You know what I mean? Like it's it's. And you're I, not on. You're not on the coolest social media app out that there. That is true. Hey, and Alec, that is a great segue. Uh, follow Movie the Podcast on TikTok. I started a TikTok. Right now, it's just two videos of me, but I'm going to start clip chimping the show and putting like funny clips up. We're gonna, you're gonna we're gonna start, put... you're gonna start what? Uh, clip, uh, cl- clip, clip chimping the show. <laughs> clip chimping. It's a it's a Twitch expression. Uh, oh. I think we should clip chimp whatever that means. Yeah, I'm gonna start uh, clipping the show and putting funny bits the up there. Mole hole the podcast meme industrial complex. There you go, Sean. Thank you. Tune in. I think I think I'm gonna be an Alec dancing in empty I, malls. I'm trying to uh I'm trying to look through my, my apartment to find funny action figures to represent each one of us. So <laughs> the the gears are already turning up here. <laughs> um but yeah, follow uh, uh movie the podcast on uh TikTok. My barbarian video already has like 36 it's like up to like 4000 views somehow. How is that possible? That's like higher than anything I posted anywhere. That's crazy. How much money you got? You fucking it's nothing. Just, it's just me going back and forth just Hey man, I, I still I appreciate you. You okay with that? Hold on. Let me let me look at the counter here. It was it was nuts. I'm like this is crazy. We've got 600 YouTube subscribers now so I know it rocks. <laughs> this is great. Yeah, okay, so I'm up to uh, 3,400 views on my my Barbarian review. And we're not even climp chimping yet. Not (laughs) even climp chimping. Wait till we get to climp chimping. All right, guys, (laughs) let's talk about Three Kings. Let's talk Uh, about it. A movie, so this may come as a shock to all of you. Never seen this before. That's back to back. 
you've never seen what I thought was a very popular film. It was very popular. It's just something I never got around to watching. I've, I've never, have the rest of you seen this before? Oh yeah, I saw it a long time ago. Yeah, like, I probably, saw it when it came out. Probably whenever it came out on like home release. Yeah, I never I saw. It. I did not see it in the theater. On no VHS. I probably got yeah. it from Boy, I probably get VHS. <laughs> I probably got it from the local library. But yeah, it's uh it's pronounced it's, library, but yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, I watched it in the by the fireplace near my chimney. But the uh <laughs> No, Three Kings, you never saw 1999's Three Kings starring George Clooney, uh Iced Cube and a Ice, very likable Marky Mark along with a uh, Spike Jones of Jackass, and I had Wall Street kind of Spain. steals the movie. Yeah, Dude, it kind of does. No idea. I and I like I like like Spike Jones, but even watching the movie, like I looked at the I looked at the little thing on Plex that said the actors, and it's like he, he spells his name weird. I was like, wait, Spike Jones? That's Spike. Wait, Jones. Spike Jones. Yeah, He's really I think good he in was, the movie too. I think he was filming or had just finished being John Malkovich when this movie came oh, out. Oh shit. He should wild. act more. He was re- I thought he was great in well, this apparently movie. Apparently they uh, they told David Russell no and he basically threatened to walk off the project if they didn't let him cast Spike I, Jones. Good was, job I David mean, Russell. He was excellent in this movie. I I was like after I watched it that's all I could think of. I was like he should be in more stuff cuz I thought you know I I everybody's good in this movie like spoiler alert I thought the cast was really good in this movie. But like he <laughs> like really stood out to me especially knowing after watching it like oh that's he's a director he's not even a fucking actor like he was yeah. great even though anyway, uh, what happened? well so in this movie um we are uh this is uh 1991 i believe and i'm gonna just say something real quick so 1991 right like this is operation desert storm this is bush one territory and we've got these guys these reservists out in the desert and they've just won like uh, one quote unquote Saddam has just given up. Yeah. They, uh, the Iraqi army is leaving Kuwait. And so it's a very jarhead kind of vibe of like, we're out here in the desert doing this, but what are we really doing? Like, that's sort of an ongoing theme that you're going to see in the movie. Well, you get the um, idea that they haven't been doing anything. No. Right. Like, and they're, they've just been posted there and doing nothing. For like, I don't think months. I don't think it's clear in the movie, but the reserve unit they're in is like a fucking psyops. Like, a, um, they just do propaganda. Like, yeah. they're not even like real, real like soldiers. I guess in right. that way, they're just there to make fucking pamphlets. Right, and they're they're, they're supposed to win the press war. That um, right, they're, they're what's the it, press uh, war that uh, Gail the Snail's mother is? Uh, is yeah, running. that's where she's from. <laughs> what, Nora the- Dunn. Yeah, that's yeah. She played Jim Gale Saturday the Snail. Oh shit! I don't even remember that. Nora Dunn, you don't. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. But she she played Gale the Snail's mom, and, and it's always sunny. Yeah, yeah that's how. So. That's what I recognized her from. Frank's you're fuck, sister-in-law. You're in that he you wanted should to be bang. sexually acting. <laughs> so uh, also a, Judy, so a a very hot Judy Greer shows up. Oh, in this very movie. unincredibly hot Judy Greer. Um, yeah, and you know what? And you know we're gonna get to it, but I think. I think we have to give the, it to him. Um, the uh, Fatty, Fatty Magoo, I forgot. So it's, there's two It's Always Sunny people in this movie. But Mohol, what I think is going to end up be a first ballot Hall of Famer. Uh, Hall of Flamer, Jesus. Uh, Hall, Hall of, of Famer. Flamer. I mean, that's, more, uh, that's more appropriate. Uh, but uh, Cliff Curtis, who's shown up in so many things that we've watched oh, and is yeah. always good in them. Uh, no matter Cliff, what race he's No matter playing. what race he's supposed <laughs> to play, Cliff Curtis shows up and brings it. Uh, so shout out to Cliff Curtis. He's like a utility infielder for movies. I don't want to bury the lead here, but I think the best performance in the movie is the uh, Iraqi interrogator. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, he's the best actor in a in a in a film with a lot of great performances. But he is tremendous, and we'll get to it. Um. So anyway, we're here. the The war has just been won, but these guys are out on patrol, and Marky Mark gets to shoot somebody who might be surrendering. Yeah. I don't know, but he finally gets to kill somebody, but it seems like that sort of shakes him up. And now they're back at base, and they're dancing, and they're screaming, and Nora Dunn's reporting on it. And one of the things I thought was interesting, because given the time frame, right, uh, this is 1991. We're in, uh, I was in, we, I mean, we're all in elementary school, right? But yeah. one of the things that they brought up was, does this take, I think one of the things that Nora Dunn asks is, 
does this take off the uh, the the stink of Vietnam? And you know, the Vietnam, I forgot that Vietnam only ended in 1975. The conflict yeah. officially only ended in 1975. So this is you know, this is still you know within two decades that that's still like sort of. I was like, isn't right. that a little old to be referencing? But they they were so, closer to Vietnam then than we are to 9/11 right now. That is correct. And we are sitting here with that was the last major conflict that America was in. And we kind of walked away with an L. So this was like, you know, us finally getting our groove back militarily complexly. So um, you're introduced to this cast of characters. You're introduced to Marky Mark, who is, uh, I think we discussed it in the group chat. When he's just playing sort of an affable dum-dum, he's great at that. Like, he's great at that in Boogie Nights. The big uh, the big hit uh, uh, in uh, Pain and Gain, like that's the marquee mark you want. You need him, you need him balanced out in an ensemble cast, just being sort of a like a big sweet idiot. Like he does great in that role. Yeah, the scene uh, closer to the end when he's like clearly shell shocked slash concussed. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And he's like, he starts flipping out on Cliff Curtis. Like, Who the fuck are you? Who the fuck are you? Put your gun down. They're like, no, no, no. He's with us. He's like, oh, you're with us. Oh come on, man! Bring it in. Like, he's yeah. so like, yeah. yeah, it's like a switch, and it's like, why can't it, he act that good all the time? Well, why can't he do that? I, why can't he do that through. all the time? I, I was thinking about this as I was. I was thinking the same thing, Alec, when I was watching the movie. But I think what it is is that now he so like this movie and in Boogie Nights, which I would say are his two best performances, like hands down. Mm-hmm. Like he's legitimately very good in both those movies. He's like this kind of dumbass like vulnerable person and then everything he does after that like what he's known for he's always like the big tough action hero yeah and it doesn't work like well yeah like when you see him in movies now versus what he looked like in this movie he's like yeah. twice as big yeah yeah and it doesn't it, it but it doesn't work like he, it's weird because like he's obviously like a big tough looking guy but he doesn't have that charisma like like for to, to call back to to a person we were already talking about on the show like John Bernthal looks like a big tough motherfucker that I don't want to fight, but like yeah. Marky Mark doesn't. Even though Marky Mark is probably much bigger than John it's his, Bernthal, it's his voice. Like his yeah. voice throws everything off, like the pitch and just like the what? Mm. Huh? No, yeah, yeah. I don't he, know look, he looks he looks like yeah. a guy that would beat an Asian man half to death. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Oh shit. Well, anyway, <laughs> just remember uh, if he was on the plane in nine eleven, it wouldn't have happened. It wouldn't have happened. <laughs> thank you alec yeah i didn't know that somebody oh, posted speaking that, I was like, of jericho real quick i'm sorry it kind of like i almost had to shut the karate kid off because they started playing judas and a guy was singing along with it i'm like I'm hell out. yeah on karate kid what's or that just in your house no, <laughs> so, no. <laughs> so i just walked in like hey <laughs> What I'm 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 so on the show they were listening to Judas. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Man. I said th- I would have preferred a home invasion. Like <laughs> if I ever invade your house, that's how I'm coming in. Where's you know, Chris least... Benoit when you need him? Right. Ooh. Send for the man. Anyway. <laughs> So, uh, so these guys are just kind of like chilling in the desert, doing their thing, celebrating, having a good time. They're gonna, they got another busy day of just in docking Iraqi prisoners. So they got to stop getting drunk off of imported liquor. I'm not sure. Uh, and as they're in docking, folks, you got Marky Marcus is like, hey man, just kneel down. No big deal. Just come hang out. You know, we're gonna teach yeah. you some food. We're gonna, and then you got Spike Jones running around with a revolver, just screaming at people trying to blow their heads off. Where did he um, get that fucking thing? That's not like standard issue. No, that thing it looked no almost joke. like a flare gun. Yeah, yeah, that's what I barrel. thought. That's what I thought it was. I thought it was a flare gun. <laughs> I think it's one of those. Um, it, so. I think it's one of the. I think it's one of those uh, revolvers that shoots four ten shotgun shells. I forget what they're Jesus called. Jesus Christ! Yeah, yeah, they don't. Yeah, the judge, <laughs> the Taurus judge. I think that's what it was. Good. Um, yeah, I think stupid. Um, so uh, when they're doing this in doc, they find jammed up a dude's uh, 
rectum is a uh, a treasure map, which you know is you know where you typically find treasure maps. This this scene too is hilarious because he's like he only has the one glove, and he tells Spike yeah. Jones to dig it out of his yeah. ass. Yeah, he's open like, it up. Yeah, this is how the chain of command works. This is how the chain yeah. of command. Yeah, I, I don't know what to uh, tell you. I don't want to tell you, man. What's his name? Gavin. Yeah. So was that also, it? Yeah. I think it was it was something like that. Conrad. Also, Conrad. Uh, Conrad. Also, like. I it's I, I was immediately thinking about how we were talking about um, G- Good Morning Vietnam, and we we're talking about how it's like a tonal mess. But like this movie is like a master of tone because it yeah. is funny, and it it juggles being funny and being like action packed and being and like super sad, sad. yeah, and oh like, my god, and like reflective about like what fucking a mess war is, especially like modern war. Like I, I, I couldn't stop, but like, like this was amazing as far as it being able to juggle all those things. Whereas like good morning Vietnam was just like, what am I watching? You know what I mean? Like I bought yeah. everything in this movie. Like I, and it, it, it it's, it was incredible. Like reading the script, it must've been like, this will never work. Cause I mean, that scene where they pulled the, the map out of the ass is hilarious. I mean, it's like on paper. It's, I'm sure it was even funny funnier. Read. Is like the throwaway of like, yeah, they pulled a map out of his ass. Like you should see what they pulled out of his dick. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then like the reporter trying to find out like the details, and everybody had like a different story. Yeah, like, it was like yeah. the ultimate game of telephone. Yeah. When Spike um, Jones is retelling Marky Mark shooting that guy that's surrendering, and his head yeah. pops off. Yeah, when they cut to the flashback and the the font of blood that happens. So, so uh, anyway, they find this map. They're trying to figure out. So, uh, the chief, played by uh, uh, Ice Cube, he's like, "All right, well, I think this is a. We think it's a map. We've got some uh, some recon photography. We can figure out these might be Saddam's hidden bunkers. You know, let's try and figure this out." Word gets up, you know, around the base to George Clooney, who's sort of this disaffected, like he's like a major. Who's been put on PR detail? Yeah, and he's, he's like a former ex- like special forces. He's a former special yeah special forces guy. Delta? He's just completely like he he thinks this is like the like the biggest waste of time. Like the war is the biggest yeah. waste of time, and especially what he's doing in this war Besides is a tremendous. Waste Judy time. Greer, yeah. So he's banging Judy Greer, and that's rad. Um, but he's assigned to escort Nora Dunn around, and she's like this hard-nosed reporter who's not banging everybody. Uh, so he sends, he catches word of this, and he uses his uh, his his spec ops knowledge, and I, he drops a line. He's like, "This why we're special ops. We get the best flashlights." Uh, to that put a that black... line is fucking tremendous. Oh, that man. line is tremendous. <laughs> uh, first of all, let's let's stop for a minute and talk about how great Jamie Kennedy is in this movie. Right? He yeah. really, he's is. actually like, really good. Who would have yeah. thought? Jamie Kennedy could be so like perfect. Yeah, yeah he, he he like he's just a, he's like a big old dumb. He's a bigger dumb dumb than Conrad. He's like standing outside <laughs> with his night vision goggles on, guarding the shed Dude, as, as George like, Clooney comes they, marching they don't in. Work in the these daytime. don't work during like, the daytime. Yeah, well, they they sort of work. They yeah. sort of work. <laughs> he's like, I didn't so, get to use them. So yeah, and then that's sort of you know it's funny. It's a funny joke line, but it really does sort of express like the kind of mood of everybody in the movie, which is like we got all this training, we did all this shit, we never got to do anything with well, this it. Is or like, about like, it. To me, this is like a better version. Like a lot of the same themes are revisited in that movie Jarhead, which I also I like. Liked. Jarhead, you didn't like? Not Jarhead. nearly. I did like it, but not nearly as much as I like this. But yeah, that's that also Jarhead kind was of all about. about the malaise yeah. of war, like, and they're just never getting. It was like Scar. It was was that Scarsgard? That was Jill um, and Hall. No, it was Jill and Hall, but Jill and Hall's buddy, the the spotter, his well, snipers. His, that wasn't um. What's his name? Generation Sling Kill. Blade? No, I thought it was. Um, Didn't the little kid from Slingblade, his buddy in Jarhead? I think you're no, right. No, I thought it would. I'll look it up. But anyway, um, so these guys find the map and then. George Clooney's like, look, here's the deal. These are probably Saddam's hidden bunkers. He stole all this stuff from Kuwait. I have no issue stealing things from Saddam Hussein. We've got, you know, we're out of here in two weeks. This is 60 miles away. Uh, we can take this quick. and retire. You go ahead. Sorry. Um, I was Googling Jarhead, and it said film series. Yeah, there's they like made, a bunch of direct video sequels. They made like, like stupid four, action movies. They made yeah. four sequels to Jarhead. What? Yeah, that's 
Yeah. Anyway, sorry. I've I've seen them pop up on like the streamies. Uh, Sean was right. Lucas Black it is, is Lucas the Black. You're 100 correct. He's the little kid from Sling Blade, who also was yep. in uh, Tokyo Tokyo Drift. <laughs> yep. Nice. Um, yeah, also, uh, Mother's Milk is in the movie. Laz Alonzo. Oh, sure. Oh. Yeah. oh wait, no. Peter Scar- Peter Sarsgaard is also in Jarhead, <laughs> but he's not the character that you. But he's not Scarsgaard. What well, doesn't matter anyway? Um, so they're like, all right, here's the plan. We're gonna go steal this gold. We're gonna all be rich. We're gonna quit our day jobs and we're gonna go home because George Clooney's got like two weeks to retirement. It's also and like, it's also important to note that Ice Cube sort of speaks Arabic. Like he at least can read it and understand bits of it because there are parts definitely where they're speaking Arabic and he notices what they're saying. But like, I don't yeah, know right. that he can full out translate it. Oh, uh, while uh, we're talking about actors with like really great performances, you wouldn't expect. I thought. Uh, Ice Cube was excellent in this movie. He's like subtle and like he's like the voice of reason throughout the entire movie. It's wild. Yeah, it's... like he, again, like they're all kind of playing. Like I, I guess with with Marky Mark and Ice Cube, like I know them from their more like when they became more established, where like they kind of play the same character, and they're not they're not playing those characters in this movie. You know what I mean? Like, well, I think like, this oh, is, they can actually act. We talk about actors pieces all the time. I think this is a director's piece. Cause like everybody in this movie, that's normally dog shit is excellent. Yeah. That is, yeah. No, good call. Um, so they, so like, all right, we're going to head out. We're going to go to just outside of Karbala and we're going to get this, we're going to get this mall on it. So they hop in a Humvee and they start heading that direction. And the while they're out there, they're... you mean those little metal cubes that you make chicken broth out of? No. Can <laughs> yeah. you keep this guy under control? That <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> the fact that George Clooney has like no time for it is just... George yeah. Clooney really is like he's a great actor. Mo- he's brilliant in this fucking movie. Yeah. Um so they're rolling around. I want to I, I want to point out some Ice Cube is knocking Nerf footballs out of the sky with an M16. That's impressive shooting. Right Dude, how there. funny is that scene where he's, they're going on about black quarterbacks, and it's like, okay, we can agree that there are many excellent black quarterbacks. <laughs> and the fact the way oh, the monkey like, mark uh, tries to settle it. He's like, what about Warren Moon? Well, the Oilers, they didn't do anything. Yeah. yeah. What about yeah. Randall Cunningham? I gotta Eagles are never going to win with him. I gotta send you guys the fucking uh, screenshot though, because I meant I wanted to send that gift to you guys. So I put it in the line, yeah. and it just showed a bunch of pictures <laughs> of Tom Brady. Oh shit! Sure. Uh, I I also like the reincorporation later in the movie. They have this conversation about black quarterbacks, and then he makes that throw with the football to blow up the helicopter. I have issues with that <laughs> throw, might I add, but that's oh, fine. Yeah. I loved it. I thought that was a fun scene. He's like that's a great a football into the down draft of a helicopter. Here, here we go. I'm here just we saying. Go. I loved Jeez. it, but like I'm just. <laughs> it saying. was fun, and they like again, like that's fun screenwriting. Yeah. Like you had that. Like, little conversation and it pays off in the movie like you didn't expect that that conversation to pay off later on no it's very and fun so conrad's out here rigging up nerf footballs with c4, c4. <laughs> and just chunking them around the place and then they're like all right that's enough of that enough goofing around listen here's what we're gonna do we're gonna hit this thing hard we're gonna hit it fast so let's practice on this cow and then <laughs> practice a raid on a cow which immediately steps on a mine and that from this point on, the movie stays. No, no, it's, it, it's not a, a mine, though. This is even funnier because, like, oh, it no, it's blows a cluster up. Bomb. Yeah, it's like, well, it's a cluster bomb. They're harder to see. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> which is probably an American cluster bomb, which we dropped. Yeah. Um, yeah. So so now the stakes are getting a little more. They're, they're covered in blood and guts, and they're like, all right, here we go. Let's go hit this thing. They they come to this town. Everybody's like, uh, what does Clooney say? Clooney says something about the... The, the shine of the red, white, and blue, or the shield of the with the U.S. It's like we're riding in just on the confidence of being American, and yeah. low like they're flying the flag, they're coming in, no one's fucking with them. Everybody's like, okay, cool, cool, cool. And there's people like like coming to them, like help us, help us, help us. And this is sort of where it gets darker and sadder because it's all these disaffected Iraqis that are like Bush said they were going to help overthrow Saddam. Where's George Bush? Are you here to set us free? Because they go in. They raid this bunker. The bunker doesn't have anything they're looking for. But the entire time, the Iraqis are like, the Americans are here. It's time to revolt. So they jump up and they start fighting the guards that have been taken down. And more guards show up. And it turns into a complete clusterfuck. And then you get this woman who's like, 
we need milk. We can't feed our babies. And then there's trucks coming in with milk and it gets RPG'd and milk like blows up all over the place. And there's people, it's like a really powerful scene because it's people that are so desperate that they are scooping it out of the sand and drinking it like out of the dirt because they're so bad off and they're, they're so screwed over. And so all this is going down. More Iraqi reinforcements have come, but there's a truce. There's a ceasefire. We've, we're, we're at peace, quote unquote, now. So now the American soldiers and the Iraqi soldiers have this sort of tense moment of, hey, we'll take it from here, chief. And they salute and like send you on your way or whatever. Um, or am I getting ahead of myself? They leave, I love no, they the leave United town. States of freedom. Yeah, I mean, I love the United States of freedom, too. Well, because the first they go to that, the first bunker has either junk or nothing. It's got like it's got like passports and shit they don't care yeah. about this. So they leave the town and, and then they like, leave oh, no. and then Clooney's like, there's something about that well. Right. And they so go they come... back. Yes. And that's the well that has everything. Uh, everything. It's got it's got suitcases full of Rolexes and jewelry and silver, and then it's got just tons and tons and tons of bullion, and then we learn about the tensile strength of luggage from Ice T's former <laughs> career working at the Detroit airport. And they get a whole yeah, lot of like, Louboutin bag. He's like, he used to work in an airport. These have a, yeah, these have a tensile strength of 65 pounds. So we need a lot of these bags. <laughs> they load up Louis Vuitton bags with gold bullion. And then they go back up and now things are getting tense. Cause now more Iraqi soldiers showed up finally. And like an Iraqi captain has shown up. He's like, oh, you want the gold, huh? Return to Kuwait. Saddam can't keep. That's okay. And he like orders his soldiers to help them load up all of this gold into this moving truck that they've, they've uh, commandeered. Now, meanwhile, the whole, the, while meanwhile. they're down in the bunker, they also free a bunch of prisoners. They free Chris, Cliff Curtis and a bunch of other folks that come out of this bunker. And he's getting like reunited. And they found him strapped to a, a mattress uh, spring being electrocuted so he's out there he's got like the thing in his teeth so doesn't bite his tongue off as he's being electrocuted and they're like oh these are these are saddam these are iraqi dissenters we need to we need to keep them it's like listen we'll get them back we'll get them back this is all happening in arabic this is what they're speaking and so they're all up there and it's like okay we gotta let these people go and there's this real this tense moment with all right take the gold and leave we're gonna take care of this and it's established that saddam does not care about the wealth Right now, Saddam cares about putting down any resistance, and that's expressed through his, his chain of command. So then George Clooney starts having a moment of, we can't let you do that. We can't. We're taking these people with us. He has like a standoff with this commander. This com- they, they fight over the barrel of an AK-47. The dude gets shot in the foot, and then there's a bing, bang, boom sequence of people getting shot in slow motion. And then this guy catches one through the chin out the top of his head. And then it's like, all right, let's go. They round up all the people. They get in the trucks. And they start heading out of town. Meanwhile, an Iraqi tank shows up and shit gets wild. Also, they end up driving through a minefield. So the they drive entire the minefield and they're getting hit with uh CS gas. CS yeah. gas mortar shells. Yeah, so they are getting so so the whole the whole operation is going tits up, all right. Uh they're out there, they're getting CS gas, they're in a minefield, the truck full of gold blows up, the Humvee blows up. Well, meanwhile, I might add, Jamie Kennedy has been put on Nora Dunn detail, and he's just to drive. He's just supposed to drive uh, her around the desert because uh, George Clooney's "quote unquote" checking something out. And he, I forget, he called her. He called her in, and he's like, "Yeah, yeah, we're getting ready to bring her in or whatever." So now they're kind of in route. So everyone gets the cs gas causes enough confusion that everyone gets separated marky mark gets captured and taken back to the iraqi bunker and then george clooney uh ice cube and spike jones are all a little fucked up and they get taken back with a good chunk of the gold back to this sort of iraqi uh uh resistance bunker so now we've got these parallel tracks going on you have george clooney trying to talk to these former iraqi soldiers and these iraqi resistance folks and like, listen, we, they're like, we'll help you get the gold, but you have to get us to the Iranian border. And they're like, they make a deal to say, okay, we're going to do that. Meanwhile, in what is probably the most powerful scenes in the entire movie, a movie full of great scenes, you have Marky Mark. First of all, he finds a 
I guess, a working satellite phone, is able to call home to his wife who's just given birth All to right, his kid. So, so hold on. Time out. Pause. Sure. You had a problem with the fucking football pass, but you don't have a problem with this cell phone scene where he's I don't, I don't know the physics of cell phones. Magically able to call his wife. Like, this is the only part of the movie I was like, that's a little goofy. Like, maybe it's a satellite phone, maybe? I no, don't know. It, he just dials out. Like, you got it. Like, they're, they're international calls. They don't work like that. I, I don't know. It's, I mean, suspend disbelief is a wonderful scene. What, what yeah, was all yeah, of a sudden said to me? If you're calling America from another country, the international code is just one. Because we're it? the best. Because we're number true? one. Yeah. That's if you're yeah. dialing it to, like, Europe, or it's like one zero. Like, there's other numbers there. All just right. like DJ Khaled said. I take it back, then. So he calls. We, have, we we the best music. We the best cell phones. So, <laughs> uh, he calls home. He tells his wife roughly. You know, he does. What's funny is he like I love the scene because he doesn't panic. He's not like oh my god. He's like hey how are you? Oh I'm okay. Trying to get home. Things are all right. Just busy at work. Oh by the way, call the, the command. The, well first the, he tries what, what to was call that oh, that's, just, that's just the wall blowing up. Yeah. Yeah. First, he calls the operator. He's like, she's like, he's like, do you speak English? He's like, yes. He's like, how can I connect you? He's like, can you connect me to Operation Desert Storm? Yes, yeah, like, yeah, I don't yeah, have a yeah, number yeah. for Operation Desert Storm. Yeah. So then he calls home to Detroit. Detroit calls. He's like, call the reserve office, honey. Tell him outside of Kabbalah and he right here and send help. I'll see you soon. I love you. I'm going to set you up. And so then he does that. He gets, uh, and now he's being taken to another room, and then you are – I got to look the guy's name up because uh, I forget who said it earlier, but he this guy just kills it. The actor's name is uh, Saeed it. Tagmui, Dude, and he it. plays kills Captain it. Saeed, who is an Iraqi officer who basically interrogates and tortures Marky Mark. He's like, no one knows you're coming here, bro. He's like, what's wrong with you? Like, he's like, he's like saying, like, hey guys, okay, he's like, come on, dude. And he's like talking about how, like, you know, I joined Saddam's army because, you know, it'd be good money for my family. I could raise my, you know, I could, I could raise my family and it would take care of them. And now, you know, your bombs crush my wife's legs. She has not any legs anymore. Your bombs drop concrete on my kid's head. My three year old son in his bed. He's dead now. And then Marky Mark's like, oh, I have a daughter too. He's like, why you tell me that, bro? It's like we're both fathers. Like, no, bro, I'm not a father oh, no, anymore. My kid's anymore. dead. Oh, did you? I'm sorry, I had to look away for a second. Did you uh touch on the part of the beginning of the interrogation where he's like, America's so fucked up they made Michael Jackson hate himself for being black? Yeah, yeah. he was like, What's wrong with Michael Jackson, bro? <laughs> he's like his face all carved up, he's white. Yeah, so like there's this big indictment of that. So there's also sorts of indictments of America. There's one about how we do warfare, and it's two, it's how we leave people like twisting in the wind there's a great like a uh, three billboards bit of dialogue earlier in the movie where uh uh one of them uses a racial slur and ice cube's like i don't want to hear you say that and then marky mark uses other racial slurs and he's like yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. it's good. like camel jockey is perfectly acceptable oh like, yeah i'm trying not to say Christ. that oh. but yeah well yeah. I, i'm quoting marky mark it's yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the, the the ice, ice cube's only problem with it is when they contain slurs about black people it's it's While that's slurring. true. I'm not yeah. going to say those two. While yeah. slurring the Middle East, the ones that I, don't I refer to, to black, words... the ones that don't yeah. refer to African Americans, he's fine with because you fuck can them. use your imaginations. I think we all know the the slur he was using. Just hit me up on TikTok. I'll give you the rest of them. So <laughs> you don't have TikTok. So and you're now, not using uh, the show's page for that one. Well, uh, the just will be spread be, You're just you're just going to use those. To, like, hey guys. <laughs> you want to hear some Middle Eastern slurs? Yeah, here's the Middle Eastern. Here's the top two Middle here's Eastern the top slurs two that Middle Eastern that Ice slurs. Cube hated. All right, well, this is getting clump chimped. <laughs> We're getting clump chimped. So now, uh, anywho, um, so there's this whole scene where, like, you know, you're like this guy who worked. He's he's part of Saddam's regime. He's part of the problem, and he is incredibly sympathetic because it's just like. His life's a fucking nightmare, right? And then you got Marky Mark. So this movie takes a, this, like, it's it's already made the turn, but the turn is continuing from being sort of a maybe a fun heist romp a la an Ocean's Eleven to becoming, like, sort of a very dark commentary on war and, like, the uh, 
the unintended consequences of war and the carelessness with which war is conducted and like the fallout of leaving jobs unfinished and yeah, of just like, like yeah. humanizing both sides of a war. Exactly. Like just like the war is like, I, I think like the thing I took away from most of this movie is like, well, the war is over, but what does that really mean? It's not really over. Like, we just well, it's stopped. not over for these people. It's, yeah, over for, over, yeah. it's over for the U.S. government in the sense that we can leave now because we've decided that this is an arbitrary point to stop. Right, exactly. Um, But, like, these folks are going to have to live with the fallout, especially the ones, and they keep bringing it up. It's like Bush said to rise up, and we'd support you. Now where's this? Now we're getting killed in the streets like Bay of Pigs. Like, it's like you were supposed to help us, and you didn't. And now we're being slaughtered. So, uh. George Clooney calls in some favors to get some uh, get some additional, like, some trucks to move people. He's like, we're going to assault this prison uh, in this bunker in the side of the cliff, and we're going to get our guy back, we're, and then we're going to get you and your people to the Iranian border with the gold, whatever. So there's also a great scene where the uh, – uh, is it McKelty Williamson, the guy who played uh, Forrest Gump's boy? He's, the, he's like – getting ready to be a general and then the captain his name the Holt, actor's name's Holt, yeah. Holt what's he from Holt, Holt mind McCann, hunter like, batman versus superman, superman. Okay. yeah he plays uh he's great he's in like every david fincher movie he's like one of the guys he's like one of the the like disciples in tyler durden's fight club he's the guy that that smacks the bible out of the guy's head he's Look, we're in, talking like, about it, we're, we're talking about Jason Patrick's chiseled jawline last week. This guy is a face made of granite. Like this guy is like that guy. He, he's if you haven't watched Mine Hunters, definitely watch. He's so good in that. Like that's like he's a he's always been like a kind of like he is in this movie. Like he's always he's been in a ton of shit. He's got a ton of acting credits, but he's never been like the guy. And he kind of gets to be the guy in in Mine Hunter a little bit. I highly recommend. Yeah. It's a shame they'll never get a season three of that show because it was really good. So there's, there's a scene with him and uh, McKelty Williamson. They're going, they're somewhere out there. We're going to find them. We just got to look. Here's the map. We'll figure it out. They got, And then meanwhile, all of these trucks are just driving out into the desert for no reason. They're just not paying attention to what's happening. So, yeah, I, I love the oversight. Like, nobody knows anything. Like, they, you know, this is supposed to be, like, this hierarchy. Everybody checks in with everybody. Like, nobody knows anything that's going on in this space. So everybody kind of converges on this, like, so they are like, all right, we're going to do a head fake. We're going to act like Saddam's coming, and that's going to scare a bunch of people away from this fort. Then we'll attack. So they, this car comes screaming up. It's like, Saddam's on his way. He's going to kill you for screwing up. And then the guy just dips out. And the guard's like, oh, shit, Saddam's coming. Like, like the, the way he delivers that line, like, he's coming specifically for you because you messed up. And then everybody pisses their pants and, like, literally runs away, or most of them. Because they see like the, the Saddam limo coming because they've been captured previously, so that clears out a bunch of guards. So you got this convergence of you have the guard, you have like the the group coming to get Marky Mark at the same time, right? The reporter shows up. Right. Is that when she is, did she get show up with Jamie Kennedy at that point, or was uh, that earlier? It's pretty close to then, I think. If it's not right then. At some point, Jamie Kennedy gets stripped down to his underwear and sent back out into the desert, and this Nora woman's trying to, like, record everything. Um, I think it might have been when they initially got captured. But, so, all this hell's breaking loose. Uh, they get in there. They save Marky Mark. Uh, they Marky Mark doesn't kill. The one dude gets shot in the leg. This guy, Saeed, um, he gets shot in the leg, and then George Clooney has this moment where he hands, he put, like, puts the gun, he frees Marky Mark, because Marky Mark has been tied down to the chair, He's been being electrocuted over this coil over his jaw and ears. And he puts the gun in Marky Mark's hand, like chest, like you do it. You finish him off. And Marky Mark chooses not to. He just kind of unloads next to the guy's yeah, head. Yeah, I like, I like that scene a lot. Because he's like, he's not a monster. like, And he knows this guy is angry as is probably not a monster too. He's just, they're just on, they're both, you know, on the wrong side of this thing. So they're right. getting out. We got this helicopter that's coming in fucking shit up uh ice cube destroys it with a c4 uh football you've got a couple of guards decided to come back and see what's going on spike jones is stuck under a corpse marky mark finally gets out and this is the point that alec was making uh he comes out and he's just shell-shocked and fucked up and like he's like like he you can tell he is just a mess and it's some of his best acting probably ever um yeah he's great 
and his boy Conrad comes running out. Like, oh my god, you're because Conrad loves Troy. Troy is Marky Mark's character. It's, Troy, you made it, Troy made it. And then they even they Con- even like uh say that they're getting with a Chiron. Yeah. At the very beginning when they're explaining who everybody is, and they put like words up on the screen. And it's like Troy is a uh, well, father of one, blah, 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 carpet salesman or whatever. And then it's like Conrad is a high school yeah. dropout who wants to be Troy. The yeah. scene where they're like, What like you want to quit your day jobs and it shows the cut of it's got Marky Mark like changing copy toner, getting all over him. Like it's got fucking Ice Cube like wrestling bags at an airport, and then it cuts to Spike Jones just unloading a, a sawed off pump action shotgun into like the husk of an old Buick that's right. covered in like stuffed animals. He's like, I don't really have a day job. It's fucking- <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it keeps coming up. They're like, oh, he didn't finish high school. It's like, stop telling people that. Um. <laughs> So they get them. They get everybody together. They're like, all right, we're gonna head to the Iranian border now. So they're getting out. They're making a run. Uh, Nora's there covering it. But now, by now, the uh, the brass have caught wind of the fact that they're doing this, and this is well. This is not what's supposed to be happening. Like we are not allowed. To, we're no longer involved in this conflict. So there's. It turns into like a much better version of the end of Tears of the Sun, where like we're getting to this border, the Iranian border. With all these refugees, and there's like yeah, all these hold, like kind of bonding moments. I'm sorry, hold, I on, a, hold on a second. Yeah, when when you were talking about Marky and Mark, I interrupted you. I forgot to say that uh, Spike Jones gets shot. Oh right, he yeah. gets shot in the shoulder. Um, and then and, and Marky Mark, Mark gets shot in the gut, like in the lungs. Ish. Yeah, Marky yeah. Mark has a sucking chest wound, and Conrad dies. Yeah, yeah. Conrad has been so enamored with the Iraqi people since he met them and actually was with them for a day or two that he wants to go to. He wants to be taken to the shrine, I think is what they called it, wherever yeah, the shrine with the holy man. He's like, that sounds like a pretty good deal. Yeah, he wants to go there with uh with the Iraqi uh, Muslims. Yeah, instead so of that- his god. His Christian, I would assume, whatever ideology he was. So there, so they get to this border, and they've got Conrad. He's basically enshrouded in linen. They've got all the uh, Iraqi uh, refugees, and they're all kind of walking. They're like, nobody bring guns. You can't take them. American soldiers. Only. And they got this sort of like um, human shield of American soldiers walking them up to the Iraqi Iranian border. And they're like, we got to get them through. We just got to get them through. So then the American helicopters drop in front of them. It's like, you can't be here. You can't do this. They're pulling the uh, pulling our guys away. Like I'm saying, Marky Mark's got this sucking chest wound that's like basically like the air in his chest is collapsing his lungs. So he's got this little air valve and he's keep releasing it with. He gets like tied up and he's like suffocating, like dying right there. It's this really tense moment where like, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's American policy being just put on uh put on the forefront of this conversation of just like where do we stop our involvement at what point do we where does our morality end for the sake of this right it, and it really it's a, it is a really tense moment until jim gaffigan for some reason yeah that was is, that who that is, was is the guard that cuts his handcuff no lines no that was jim gaffigan no I, shit. I, I was well, like, I saw, what I was is like, he is that, doing in this? I was like, is that Jim Gaffigan? Like, that is the first thing I thought when I saw him. I couldn't. No shit. That's, that's wild. Whole, yeah, I thought that was him. So they're basically like, it's 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 Clooney and Ice Cube and Marky Mark pleading, just get him across, let him get across. So then George Clooney has this moment where he gives a look to Ice Cube and he gives a look to Marky Mark. And they both kind of nod. It's like, listen, you want the Kuwaiti gold? We'll give you the Kuwaiti gold. But you got to let these people across. And so then uh, McKelty Williamson and Holt. Mc- so by now, all the Iraqi refugees have been rounded up into like a pen right there at the border on the Iraqi side to face execution or whoever knows what's going to happen. Something terrible. Um, and so they, the, the Amer- like they walk up to the basically Iraqi yard and say, you got to let them through. And they let them through. So all these guys make it to Iran with, and they're smuggling in bullion and gold. So they're hopefully taken care of. Yeah, and each, then each Iraqi got a gold bar. Yeah. So then, and then uh, George Clooney and company take the Americans, and the whole time they've got the kind of the cover of the press, 
And so instead of being court martialed, they're all honorably discharged, alleged, you know, in the, you know, coda of the movie. This is another movie with uh, Coach Carter. I love the Coach Carter coda. Um, then, you know, so you find out that, uh, oh, and they took Conrad's body with them to be enshrined in wherever in, in Iran. Uh, so then, you know, George Clooney retires. He becomes a, he becomes like a, like a military consultant to Hollywood. Uh, Ice Cube goes to work with him. Uh, so he's good to go. And you got uh, Marky Mark opens his own carpet store and he's happy and great. And then the movie, uh, just, I think that, I think that's it. I forget if there's a little wrap up about anything else. I mean, it's, it's, I don't know if no, it says anything about the war. And that's, 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 that's three Kings. And I was just looking through the cast again and I, we forgot to bring it up. And I did not realize this. I know we said that Aaliyah Shawcat was in this movie. Yeah, she's the little girl. She's the little girl with the two broken arms. I couldn't even believe that's wild to yeah. me. But that's, I mean, that's it. It's a movie that starts with like this sort of like happy go lucky heist premise and ends up just being this really like kind of thoughtful and thought provoking like exploration of war and consequence. And it's, it's, it's great. Um, yeah. It, it, it's very, very good. Like, I think, like, I, again, I said it before, but I think, like, the thing I took away most from this movie is the fact that it can, I don't know, I I don't know, this is a weird comparison, but, like, we, it's a movie that we watched on the show, but, like, a movie like Parasite is a movie that juggles being scary, being comedic, being serious, like, and it does it all without batting an eye, you know what I mean? It, 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 it. It like is a roller coaster for your emotions, and a lot like Parasite, it makes you think about you know through its through all those things through its horror and comedy and you know commentary. It makes you think about the world, and I think like you know this movie does that very well. Like how, and I think you know it's something we talked about. Uh, I think we talked about it last week about how even though this shit is all the way back in the nineties, like it feels more relevant now than ever. Like shit hasn't changed. Like we're still in never ending stupid wars that mean fucking nothing. I mean, it, you know, it, it's crazy. Like you could, you could really, you could probably remake this movie and put it in Afghanistan and it'd be exactly the same. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like mm-hmm. it's, but yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's great. Like, and performances, like across the board, like there's not a bad performance in the whole movie. Like there's not no. even one that's just like, yeah, but this guy, no, it's all. Cute. No, and normally I hate shit like this, but he overexposes a lot of the shots in it, and like I'm like, that looks interesting. I wonder so what that's... that is. And it turned out that he did it on purpose so it would look like the news photos from Desert Storm. Yeah, yeah oh. it was weird blue, like because of the way it was lit. So I was thinking about that. There's a lot of things that I feel like, you know, we talk about like the new metal horror movies. I feel like this movie had a lot of like sort of nineties filmmaking kind of tropes that were kind of thrown at it. Did a, a little lot bit. of like, did a lot of those like quick editing cuts and there's one like oversaturation. There's, one thing, there's yeah. one thing, there's one scene in particular that like is the only thing that I, I didn't like what he did. And it's when they have that kind of Mexican standoff and they shoot and everything goes like slow mo. It just yeah, it don't, I don't like it at all. But it's literally the only thing that his only directorial choice that I didn't like. Like there I like a... when they talked, they showed his like Marky Mark's like wound, and they did like the X ray, and they showed like the pus going out. Like, the NFL blitz the league. I, I like that. I thought that was cool. Yeah. Like there was a scene early in the movie where I forget what the transition was. But I think it's between George Clooney doing something, ends up being like ultra slow mo, and then it comes to them dumping like alcohol all over Conrad's hands because he just pulled the map out from the dude's butt, and then it like starts in slow mo and then it ramps back to real time. There's some stuff like that that I did not care for, and there's like a couple of scenes where like they were showing people and like the sky behind them was moving like like oh, I real like fast, that. like I the like clouds behind shots. it. I, thought those I mean, it kind of felt like you know. Like I'm saying, I feel like it was still like a product of its time. Like it felt kind of um, natural born killers esque, not as heavy handed. Yeah. I grant you, but like it, nothing um, is. <laughs> but yeah. and I also want to just touch his on his shirt says demon because he's a bad guy. He's a bad man. <laughs> um, there's a scene 
that I'm surprised Sean didn't bring up, or maybe he was in the, he'll bring up in the final controls, but I just want to touch on it. The scene, and it's just a really charming scene where they're in this bunker that has all of these cars in it. And throughout the movie, Ice Cube and Marky Mark have been arguing about whether Lexus makes a convertible or not. Yeah. And he walks, and Ice Cube walks up to him in his car and is like, like, is Infinity? He's like, Lexus make this? Like, no, Infinity only. Like, all the Iraqi guys who, like, know the cars, like, they're all in agreement. They're all like, yeah, Infinity only, Infinity only. And then it gets blown up later. And then yeah. fucking Mark and Mark's like, hey, that's your car. That's the Infinity. <laughs> that's the Infinity. Uh, 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 fucking, I can't think of it. You know what I mean? The Infinity. Well, also, the Infinity, that, that yeah. also the Infinity Convertible. Out. That's the one. That comes. That's the scene that we're all talking about, where he's like super out of it, just like shell shock. Yeah, yeah it's, so it makes it even. Dude, better. the scene at the end where he's like, uh, "What? Okay, well, you go over there and tell him that uh, some have to die because it's not convenient. Because I can't do that. Like that is a that line yeah. is so fucking good. I don't know. Yeah, Alec, your thoughts? Oh, I thought like. I echo everything everybody said already. Like this movie is excellent. Yeah. Um, I still remember a whole bunch of lines from this movie. It turns out, and I haven't seen yeah. it in twenty I'll years. Always or remember whatever. that Spike Jones, the We Three Kings be stealing the gold. I think that was in the trailer. Yeah, yeah I remember that. Yeah. Um, I remember some of the lines with the uh, with the Michael Jackson thing. I was like, oh, yeah. I remember this like. I won't see it almost word for word. And I've seen this movie once 20 years ago. Like it really must have uh, had an impact. Um, but yeah, this movie slaps. Like, And David O. Russell is very hit or miss, but this is definitely a hit. I yeah. so, like the fighter. I like Silver Lining Slug. I did not care for American Hustle. I didn't see good. that. I yeah, liked I American like, Hustle. I thought would. it was very overrated. Hmm. There. I love how messy this movie is. Like, it's like nobody knows what the fuck's going on. Like, nobody's like nothing's right. under control. Like, it's just like like everybody keeps looking to Clooney kind of for guidance. Yeah, and he gives it, but it's wrong half the time because he's just yeah. like, well, I guess got to do something. Here's yeah. here's my best guess. Just well, like everybody's wrong. just a massive fuck up. Like the first time they pull into the first city for the bunker, and he's like, there, there. No, wait, no, over there. He's like he doesn't even know where he's going no. inside the city that has like three buildings. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you guys touch on? I'm sorry, I, I'm doing something with the dog. Did you touch on the scene where Mark remarks that calls his wife from the cell phone and has to tell yeah. her where? Okay, yeah, and he's That's like totally thing. calm about it. Like yeah. he's just. And he's just like, hey, how you doing? Can you call you... The Operation Desert yeah, I, Storm? I, yeah, I, just, I don't know when it's going to be over. You know, they haven't given us a date yet. Yeah. He's like, so what charming you, in this what movie. What are you wearing? Oh, it's a suit jacket. It looks good, though, right? Like, fits it pretty good? Yeah, you look yeah. good. <laughs> I, I Also, there's a little scene. It's kind of dropped, but, like, it made me think of The Simpsons, and you know that's always fun. Well, that one guy is just like, he just got a handful of like the counterfeit jeans that they have. And I was like, Gloria Vanderbilt's back for revenge. <laughs> oh, yeah. He runs <laughs> he runs into Clooney and drops them all. And then he just like, I just want my jeans, man. Yeah, he just picks got, up his jeans he's got, and got, goes. Like, piles of jeans. It's just very funny to me. I know. But, um, uh, I know we talked about it earlier, but I don't think we talk, like, we didn't talk about it as much in the discussion of the, the plot. But Cliff Curtis's character, who's this. You know, Iraqi dis- like um, dissident, right? His character's great in this movie, and he's just yeah, they like really humanizes it, where he's like, "I, I my cafes were almost in profit, and then he came blew everything up." <laughs> like he's got like a very human, like not just like a oh like victim kind of thing. Like, hey man, like I'm trying to run a business over here. You just fucking bomb the piss out of it. Yeah, you're not doing us any good. Like you're just like he he is so good. He's like I said, everyone's great in this movie. He's great in this movie. That's enough yeah. of the Clears Farley show, so we can stop just yeah, falling over. Stop jerking this off. Yep. Uh, all right, five knuckle shovel time, I guess. <laughs> Alec. Um, a nine? Based. Uh, this movie's great. Like, I loved it. I was 
a little worried at the at the beginning because I was like, it's almost two hours long. I was like, man, this this it has has, has the potential has the potential to drag. But yeah, it yeah. uh it flew by. Didn't feel like two hours. It was it's a lot of fun. It's funny. It's emotional. It's heart wrenching. Um, it's got some really good like action scenes <clears throat> and sequences. <clears throat> I found myself about five or six times forgetting that there were two Gulf Wars and it's every, everything is bush, bush, bush. And just like right, slipping right. that it's the second one. Like, oh, no, no, this was <laughs> yeah. the first one. How great is that? Where it's like, George Bush wants you, me? Yes, you. And then he goes, the whole school is like, yes. And he's like, I still can't give you the car. And he's like, how much is it going to cost me? Yeah, yeah. That's a, yeah, that's a great scene. <laughs> um, but yeah, this movie, this movie, uh, I felt like it absolutely slapped. Um, I was when I, as we as I finished it, I got mad for a few minutes because it didn't have "Give Me Some Love," and then I forgot that we weren't actually doing that theme yeah. this week. It feels like it feels it like feels like a movie have, that should have had that in it. But when they were driving through the desert, it very well could have had "Give Me Some." They were this playing also, Bach, and then they were playing Beach perfectly- Boys. This is a perfectly suitable pick for a heist kiss if we would have done it back then. This could have yeah, definitely been that. Yeah. yeah. Um, TJ. Uh, it's a nine for me, dog. Uh, bordering very closely on a ten. Uh, I don't really know why I'm not giving it a ten. You know what? I'm giving it a ten. Gonna Fuck do it. it. Ten. It's perfect. I love this fucking movie. Um, it's really fucking good. Uh, Everything about it is good. I love the look of this movie. Like Sean mentioned, like the weird, like overexposures. Um, I liked a lot of the, the like hard camera angles with like the, the saturated blue skies. Like I thought it was really like visually striking. And uh, I, I, I take a shot every time TJ brings up fucking Star Wars. But like <laughs> how much how much fucking boring ass desert scenery have we seen in fucking Star Wars? And it's just like the worst thing you've ever seen and it's flat and bland. Like this is like really dynamic. It looks really cool. Um, I thought it was funny. I thought it was sad. I thought, I mean, I just, I just, it's just like an airtight script. Like it's such a, it's such a well-made film. Like there's no weak spots in it. Like it's just, it's a, and it's, it's a complicated movie, not so much in like the A to B of it, uh, A to B of it, but like the, Again, the emotional range that this movie has. Like, I mean, when this movie starts off, you think this is going to be like almost like a slapstick dark comedy. Like, obviously, the when Marky Mark shoots that guy, it, it does set the tone. But then immediately following that, it's like, look at these goofballs, like shaving each other's heads, like throwing each other, each other through tables like it's a Buffalo Bills game. <laughs> like... Speaking it's, of, they are fucking cluster bombing the Titans right now. Oh right, mm, it's good. forty-one to seven. Jesus Christ! <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it's an amazing movie. It really is. It's it's. I can understand like because like I, like Alex said, I agree with Alex. Like David O. Russell is kind of hit or miss with me, but I can understand why he got so hyped up after seeing this movie. Like the, it, it's it's incredible. Um, fantastic. So yeah, uh, Sean. Oh, it's a ten for me for sure. It's a, uh, I mean, it's a little bit long, but it's offset by the fact that it's like super ambitious, like a messy dark comedy about a, a retroactively unpopular war that was a very popular war, I believe, at, at the, the time. time. Yeah, like I, the thing I always think about the Iraq War is the Super Bowl between the Giants and the Bills because I remember watching it when I was a kid and they would just constantly cut to these guys in these tents out in fucking Fallujah or whatever watching the Super Bowl. Like I, I always, that. like, yeah. yeah, I always think of that. It's a movie that could have went wrong in a million different ways and still like sticks the landing. Like I don't know, man. Like this is a top tier war movie because it like. It is very expressly showing all sides of it and how everything's just fucked up. Like, there's nothing heroic about this movie except for maybe the very end. But, like, it, they're, they basically have to... Like, they would yeah. be inhuman at that point if they didn't, you know, give up the gold right. to let the people go. Like, I mean, you gotta do something. Like, if I would have made the movie, they would have just let them get killed and kept the gold because that's, I think, more realistic. 
Um, one thing I don't mean to interrupt you, but no, something I, I thought about that I wanted to bring up real quick because this is a perspective that only us old men are going to have. But do you remember that? It, it's so funny to think about now because this isn't even a conversation nowadays. But like, do you remember this was in the phase where George Clooney was transitioning from being a television actor to a film actor? Yeah. And there was a bunch of like, it, it was this thing where, well, can he do it? And yeah. it's like, he's so fucking good in this movie. Like, what are, like, that? it's such he's, a ridiculous thing to even talk about now, but it was so, a like, thing back then. Effortlessly good at acting? Like, it's like he's not even trying, you know what I mean? And he's always good. Like, I can't remember seeing him in a movie and be like, oh, Clooney kind of sucked in that. Like, yeah, I've never, I can't think of a movies. bad, I can't yeah. think of a bad Clooney performance. But you all remember what I'm talking about. Right? Yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. Was, he was, was on Roseanne. Dead. He was the manager on Roseanne. He was on ER. I mean, that's. Well, like, that was. He was making. I was reading. He was making ER when he was making this. He was doing. They filmed some of this, I think, in they said Phoenix and some of it in Mexico or not Phoenix, yeah. but like Arizona. Sure. But he was doing like four days a week filming ER in LA, then three days a week filming this, or vice versa. But he was working every day to film both at the same time. Yeah, I mean, I think this came out right before Ocean's Eleven. I believe. That makes sense. I think this was like 98, it was, 99. It was, it was this. So his movie. So it was this. Then, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Then Ocean's Eleven. That was 99, 2000, 2001. That's a sure. string of that's, bangers. That's a, that's a bunch of bangers right there. Yeah. Uh, anyway, nah, like, sorry, Sean. This movie's, yeah, no, no, no. This movie's fucking excellent. Like, it, it is like up there with like a full metal jacket for me as far as like an examination of how war actually is. Uh, the, the best as I could understand it. Uh, gobbles. Uh, it's gonna be a nine for me. Uh, I'm I'm glad this movie held up. That's why I wanted to watch it for my birthday pick because I remember liking it. Still like it. I think I liked it for different reasons now than Young Gogs liked it as a as a younger man. But it's uh, it's powerful. It's full of great performances. The only thing that's really taken a shine off. I didn't particularly care for some of the camera techniques and some of the. Some of the stuff seemed a little too jarring for me. Like I, I just didn't particularly care for that. That's my only gripe with the movie. The performances are amazing. Um, the performance like, across the board. The story is it takes you on like like everybody said, it takes you on a hell of a ride. Um, and then at the end, you feel kind of good, even though you've been kind of you've been brought kind of low right in the middle. I mean, it's dark. It's a fucking dark movie at times. Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, I don't know. It's it's a certified good ass movie according to Movie the Podcast. So uh, you know, shout out to David O. Russell's Three Kings. You did it. Um, I do want to point out that right before speaking of being brought low before being brought on high, uh, this movie came out in '99. Uh, the movie that uh, George Clooney had a starring role in prior to this was 1997's Batman and Robin. Oof. 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 I'd like to see Break if he was back, still make him humble. Yeah, but uh, that might be. And then he had Dust Till Dawn before on '96, which uh, I love. I love movie. that movie. Yeah, uh, yeah, that movie's fun. But anyway, yeah, uh, fucking Three Kings. That's a movie that understands that it's fucking a dumb, goofy ass horror movie, and it's fun as yeah. Hell. Robert Rodriguez gets it. Yeah, so uh, got it from '99. Let's say '99 to 2000. Two, sure. He had Three Kings. This Oh Brother, The Perfect Storm, Ocean's Eleven, Solaris, and Confessions of a Dangerous Mind. And like Solaris remake so bad, so two years. Yeah, he he directed he directed that Solaris remake too. He he had a insane. I don't know. I like of all the George Clooney characters, I feel like I'd love him the most in Oh Brother. Where Art Thou? I feel like that is like. I, I don't either mean, that or burn after reading. I was gonna say, yeah, that's the one I'm really fond of. Just his like the fucking look on his face when he shows her the dildo I, chair. That's exactly built. the scene I was thinking of. Yeah, that fucking dildo chair. It's like a dildo bike that he's like <laughs> he's so happy with himself. It's like the, what is it, the Ass Blaster five thousand? That thing that Mac has, and it's always sunny. <laughs> or that yeah, or that, uh, that 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 uh, personal transportation vehicle that Mister uh, Garrison oh, yeah. creates. That, he just that <laughs> reveal the reveal of that bike because it's like this hidden project you're like what's this all about 
it's got the exact same vibe as in the Big Lebowski, where he takes he runs over to Dracky Chewhorn's pad and he's gonna like scribble it to see like to get something. It's just that like quick sketch he did on the phone of a guy with a boner. It's like <laughs> so like the payoff is just silly. <laughs> Fucking treasury. What? Like <laughs> The Russians? No, fuck, uh, no, burn the no, don't no, just fucking burn the body. <laughs> it's a sh- it's amazing that uh, that movie doesn't get uh, enough love. That is always considered like low tier Coen Brothers. Yeah, because that's like one of my favorite movies. Just it's full so stop. good. That yeah. is like it is a it is a beloved at least for. Have you seen that, Alec? I've seen Burn After Burn Reading. After Reading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your thoughts? Oh, I remember liking it. Yeah, it's been a while. I only saw it once. I think I mixed, Beloved that, up movie the podcast I mixed movie. that up with uh, The Men Who Stare at Goats. That movie's a lot That's better true. than people acted like it was. I never saw it. Is they that also Coen? Is that Coen Brothers too? No. Yeah. Who is that? Uh, fuck. Um, so, whose pick is it next week? Well, it's still... We still we're still on theme. It's still Gimme September loving... Um, I've already so gone. I picked Alec. I think it's your pick. Oh. Alec. Uh, oh shit! I don't have one ready. Oh no! Works three. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> just go off theme. Pick some. Just pick something. Pick something random. Pick the first movie that comes on to, to, off the top of your head. We'll just play. Give me some other. Clerks. Well, here. Let me three. find my. That's not Fuck Clerks. Is it's still not available yet. Here, hang on. We can make I'm it a surprise. Away. Find out on TikTok. There's a way for me I'm gonna, to buy. I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna, I would. I'm gonna go to HBO Max and whatever. Like the fifth thing I click on will be the movie that we're watching. Oh Perfect. wow, it's old school. Like when we used to just turn on Netflix oh, and put God, a word yeah, in. Yeah, that was our old theme. Yeah, we just put yeah. random gen- word. That's generator. how we saw Hundred Bloody Acres, though, and that movie yeah. slaps. That movie rules. <laughs> a classic. But it's also classic. how we saw yeah. like. Uh, what was that? Dark Vengeance uh, yeah, School of... Will, yeah, 8 yeah. 009. No, 009 was like a re- listener request. Yeah, yeah, that was horrible. God, that was a terrible phase. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we were intentionally trying to find bad movies then. Yeah. And that was just <laughs> now we just found out that most movies are bad. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We've had two back-to-back stunners, so that's... and Two back-to-back yeah. movies that I'm really impressed. I'm surprised still that TJ has only seen these for the first time. That's yeah, really cool. me too. Two back-to-back stunners means we're due for a... We're due for a stinker. <laughs> we're, due for a, <laughs> we're due for a stinker. Um, oh, Young Guns. Hell oh, yeah. yeah. So, All right. HBO Shot Max says down. it's in the category of nonstop action. So. In a blaze of glory. I can't oh, that's, believe I've been it. missing this white knuckle thrill ride. Hell yeah, Young Guns. I used to. Lo- I watched that movie so much the VHS tape wore out. Yeah. Hell yeah. Like when, when I was Char- a kid, I could not get over that Charlie Sheen and Emilio Estevez were brothers. My dad told me like it was some fucking Freemason secret. I was it is like, fucking they don't even weird. Have the same name. Also, Lou Diamond Phillips plays a Native American, and he is Filipino. Yes. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Well, well, I you, get the, you get the regulators. Available. The regulators, well, also, Hodge, no, the the regulators is the second. That's the second, the second one? one. Yeah. Oh, and but the, the second one's good too. I don't care what yeah. anybody says. But I believe the quote in the sample is from the first movie. Oh, okay. Yeah. Can't be any geek off the streets. You got to be handy yeah, with the steel if you know what I mean. Yeah. That's a good. That's a good song. That's a song that, about Nate Dog gets so horny after murdering several people. He goes back to well, basic- but Nate Dog. <laughs> Nate Dog is Willie. He he forgoes his horniness to save Warren G first. But then he he circles <laughs> back around. But then he goes back. Yeah. And the, they they were in the same spot in need of some desperate head. Great women that are broken down. So it's literally the dentist because of the implications joke. Oh no, <laughs> he gets me to choose them basically. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, Nate Dog and the G Child, they're here great, for something else. Inside That's baseball uh, about that. Is um the, the emphasis on the six four red to be exact is because uh, Suge Knight was uh, affiliated with the Bloods and Warren G was affiliated with the Crips. So the original lyric had something with like blue, and then Suge Knight heard him and slapped him in the mouth in the recording <laughs> oh, studio shit. and made him change it. 
No shit. You know, I never thought about that to be exact. Yeah. That's yeah. I never thought about that because like Snoop, Snoop, Snoop was part of Death Row. And yeah. he was all he's a crypt, and then Suge Knight was Bloods. So how did that ever work? Shout out, out I guess to the money, money to the book. Have gun will travel the spectacular rise and fall of Death Row records by Ooh, Ronan I Row. To, I need to read that. It yeah. sounds like it's probably good. Yeah. Uh. Anyway, all right, everybody. So next week, Young Guns. I am fucking pumped. I Hell this yeah. better be. Like, we are I, off theme completely. This, this whole, We're gonna watch like one movie movies, this month for dudes that like movies. Month. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Well, one movie this month had give me some loving in it. I might yeah. fuck around and watch Young Guns one and two. Oh, Ooh. hell yeah! Treat yourself. Go off, King, dude. Yeah. I, I. It's funny because like I've seen Young Guns so many times. Like I just can't wait for the ending because the ending fucking rocks. Like I can't wait. I'm so excited to watch this movie. Good job, Alec. Yeah, yeah. solid pick. Really yeah. doing it. All right, everybody. All right. Uh, you know the drill. Uh, follow us on TikTok. Follow us everywhere else. Share the show. Yeah, get some of those clink get clanks us, or whatever we're us, giving them. Yeah, clink chip, chip, clink chip us. Hey, if you clink chip us, Gogs will send you five bucks. You know, Lord you. knows, Lord knows, I hate editing shit. <laughs> no, you're. I'll even clink chip us. I'll give you five Gogs dollars. If you if you get us, yeah, for every view, Gogs will send you five dollars. <laughs> no, not five dollars. Not a guarantee. Five. Five Gogs dollars. Yeah. Uh, yeah but, you, oh, you yeah. can use it, yeah, you can use it in the whole store. <laughs> I'll take 30, uh, 35 Gogs bucks. You're, yep, if, you're, you, if you get us more than 500 views, we guarantee that we will give you a dollar a view. Not a guarantee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your right. will know it. Your ass eat it. Your boys <laughs> fuck it. That's right. Gogs, you got anything to promote? Actually... Diet oh. Mountain Dew kind of rules, so shout out to oh. Diet Mountain shout Dew. Shout out to Diet shout Mountain, out to Mountain Dew. Diet Mountain Dew. They say Mount, Diet Mountain Dew tastes more like regular Dr. Mountain Dew. Well, then you <laughs> they taste it more like regular up. Dr. Pepper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. All right. Bye. Bye. Good night, boys. boys.